Hi, this is Shadi. When I was in high school, there was a math chapter that I will never forget. It was called probability. So it was a chapter about creating how many probable scenarios you can create regarding something. For example, if you have a bunch of letters and a bunch of numbers, you can combine them in a way that you can end up with dozens and dozens of uh, probabilities and also combinations. So again, just a few numbers and a few letters, less than 10, you can create just so much. And that makes me think of judo now and today in the regards of, you know, the gokyo is 67 throws or 65 if you want to take out the dangerous two. And, and that's not talking about the ground techniques. So just imagine the amount of possible combinations and possible expressions and possible styles. A lot of techniques are like, as Kanamaru says, it's like a tree. You have the big trunk that everything else branches out of. So let me give you an example. In the past, we had Kashiwazaki, a huge specialist where everything is tied up together. Uh, but you can see it in his specialty, which was strictly Sutemiwaza or sacrificing uh, techniques sumigaishi tomoenage uh, ukiwaza and then followed by incredibly vicious ground technique today we have someone like him it's tsunoda you are seeing her right here in front of you strictly sacrificing technique followed by incredibly strong and dominant ground technique submissions strangles pins etc now, just imagine with far less restrictions, especially on the arsenal, meaning the the things you can do with techniques, not just grabbing with hand techniques like the ones you see in wrestling, but also the judo techniques where you can also grab the leg, like the shoulder throw where you grab the leg or the inner reap where you grab the leg. And also you can be a specialist in massive pickups. For example, maybe your body is short and stocky and incredibly strong you can specialize in picking up someone with fireman's carry teguruma uh, and then with the hip techniques you can use an utsuri goshi and then for sutemi you use uranage now don't get me wrong this thing is not absent strictly because of leg grabs of course not because i'll give you an example here you see tsunoda in front of you um, you have the Georgians because they're integrating a part of their own culture, of course, their physiques, etc. You can see that there is a blatant expression that is strictly theirs and the Mongolians. Uh, of course, that's why we say Mongolian Judo and Georgian uh, Judo. For example, the Japanese, some of them, you see a lot of specialists in leg techniques, strictly leg techniques and one example is here, uh, Olympic champion Nagase. Nagase is by far the least explosive, I would say. And yet, the how he moves his opponents and how he constantly just nibbing on their legs in combination with very smart and proper gripping. He has long arms, he can reach, uh, constantly breaking grips, and he uses it to move someone in order to you know, throw them into their own defeat. He never just, you know, explodes into someone like Ono or Inoue or Mariama constantly moving. And this is where he gets his uh, wins. And things like that are very good because they will make you, you know, question your judo. And also at the same time, they will give you uh, some hope because everybody is different strength height proportions etc and just think if we had far less restrictions maybe only uh, punish attitudes and not so much techniques and just imagine what we can do with so many of these combinations and also think of particular expressions now that's just not me saying this uh, many uh, in the past have said this the old generations that i've been uh, speaking to for example Roddy Ferguson, you've seen him on my channel many times talking about this. Uh, and uh, 
of course uh, my teachers and recently I've had 2000 uh, Sydney Olympian Lauren Meese who also has a lot to say being a much smaller uh, judoka and also competing in the Olympics at only 17 so I'll leave the uh, talk to her thank you well regardless I mean you see like little things along the way like that and I you know you always kind of question well obviously like whoever's on top wants to stay on top um, you know so is it is it also catering to a specific because you look at a lot of like the Georgian styles that have kind of like an influx in wrestler uh, strategy, I guess. Um, it's almost like ostracizing other grapplers from or mm. grappling styles from the sport itself. Mm. Um, I, I mean, know. if you think about it, if you think about it, uh, one of my teachers is uh, Frédéric de Montfaucon. So he's the bronze medalist in Sydney and world champion. So he was in the minus 90s. So I don't know if you know him. He was a specialist in Tomoe Nage. And he, he says that let people express themselves. He's just said it outright. Like sometimes we think of so many rules, uh, maybe just one arm or one leg. Uh, you can only grab one leg with one arm above the knee only. So, and so which, is, which is all fine. But he says that let people express themselves. And and now people say it, or they said in the past, it's like wrestling. He says, when people hug each other, grab each other's belt and try to pick each other up, that's not wrestling. That's not like sumo or any belt style wrestling, uh, you know, those folk style uh, in Turkic wrestling or any old tradition. It is. So it's not just, you know, a freestyle thing or, and uh, now we have far less, I'm, I'm talking shido wise, we have far less tolerance for people who are bent over or just pushing with the hand. Immediately now we get penalized or force attacks. I've watched some old fights. Uh, the tolerance for Shido and some stalling, it was far bigger. So if we apply the same tolerance as today, but to punish this attitude that made some of these fights slower or people just pushing the legs or trying to go for them to look like they're doing something, I think we'd have a much better judo with a, a full full arsenal. I agree. I agree. It's and it. It's funny that you said that like that that expression moment because even now I try my best, especially if I'm practicing with somebody who is still a current athlete, to avoid touching the legs. And I have so many reactions <laughs> as I'm fighting. Where just in that moment I could come across, or just in that moment, oh, oh, and I shoot a katagruma. Oh, wait, my arm can't come through, and I, I do it as, just to try to be as respectful as possible. But it is a really limiting feeling when you see those openings and you see an opening for that creativity to express yourself mm. and remain have the sport remain personal to you because I think everybody can at least say that their judo is very, very personal to them. Your body size, your strength matters. Um, for example, I'm, I work with a young lady who is extremely tiny. She's very skinny. She has a hard time building muscle mass. And, you know, I'm trying to teach her how to utilize her weight distribution and her speed in order to counteract those deficits. Mm. And in my mind, I'm like, ah, she, if she only had the capacity to grab the legs, because I do remember that being sort of a last ditch effort for myself if I had a lack of follow through but I was able to sort of do a leg pick and hop up and hit an ouchi you know because I don't have the ability to gain muscle mass I've been hitting the gym since I was 13 years old and it's just not in my genetic makeup mm -hmm. I'm sure if I had a specific type of diet if I if I had the time <laughs> to spend on like a nutritionist and a better personal trainer or whatever but um Either way, I'm not going to be as cut or ripped as some of other athletes or have the same amount of strength. So removing removing those avenues is a bit disgruntling because judo can be very, very personal in that way. 